We're now going to take a look at the game Proc Up Snyder, which uh, is certainly related to the last game, uh, Lawrence versus Vincent, which we've just seen, in as much as Black again opts to uh, play an early knight f6 with d6, but there is a slight difference. This time after d6, bishop c4, Black now played knight c6, a very logical move, obviously giving a lot more control over e5, and therefore uh, really dissuading white from playing e5. However, after knight f3 and now knight f6, white played e5 anyway. Uh, of course, uh, I would like to reiterate, and I will continue saying this throughout the DVD, if we can play e5, we should, and in this position we can certainly play e5 and, and get away with it, and, and actually more than that. Uh, this actually gives white an advantage, in my opinion, in all lines. Now, Black normally uh, takes on e5 with the pawn. If he plays knight takes e5, again we have this nice little trick. Knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, bishop takes pawn, winning the queen. So, uh, Black takes with the pawn. And now, after an exchange of queens, queen takes d8, uh, Black has uh, obviously two moves, both of which have been played before. In the game, Schneider played knight takes d8, but let's have a look at what happens after king takes d8. Uh, obviously, white has sacrificed a pawn, and now black is also unable to castle. Uh, one of the weakest points has remained weak, and that is really where we should be concentrating our efforts. So in this position, instead of bishop takes f7, which would actually be a mistake because of e6, and then this bishop is trapped in, and king e7 may be very embarrassing uh, for white. Uh, instead of bishop takes f7, therefore, white should play knight g5, playing energetically, threatening knight takes f7 check. In fact, it is very difficult to stop uh, this move indeed. For example, if bishop e6, of course, we play bishop takes e6 check, and if f takes e6, knight f7 check. So, knight g5. Uh, if black decides to uh, run away with his king, this actually leads to uh, an equally embarrassing position, because after king c7, white has the move knight b5 check. And black has a rather unappealing choice. If he tries to venture out into the open, he does get punished again. King b6, bishop b3 check. And, of course, if king a5, a3. And white is threatening to play b4. And there is checkmate on the cards. Very embarrassing indeed. Uh, if he decides to be a bit more cautious after king c7, knight b5 check, and go back to b8... Uh, white still has a, a winning position because he takes a pawn on f7, rook g8 is an only move, and now he plays knight takes e5. Uh, a very nice move, unveiling an attack on the rook. Of course, uh, black should take the knight back, but after bishop f4 we see the point of the move. Uh, the king is totally hemmed in on b8, white is threatening checkmate in one move, and if black defends the knight through knight fd7, White plays bishop takes g8 with an extra exchange and a winning position. So, uh, black cannot uh, wander with his king to c7. The only move he does have is knight a5. But even this does not allow him to reach equality because of the move bishop b5. Note that here knight takes f7 would be a mistake because after king e8, in fact, this bishop now no longer has any good squares, and white would be obliged to take this rook on h8, but after knight takes c4, this knight remains in the corner, and black will essentially be able to get two pieces for a rook. So, knight a5, bishop b5 is an excellent move. Again, this knight takes f7 threat is still on. Uh, if bishop b6, which is the only move, white can now take this bishop, and after pawn takes knight, bishop e3 with more than enough compensation. These three pawns, triple pawns, ugly pawns, are just about ready to be uh, wiped up by uh, after white castles and puts a rook on e1. Not to mention, for example, if black plays knight c6, white can now play a very nice move, bishop c4, trying to win this pawn. And after knight d4, rook d1, uh, this pawn is now still a threat, this is a threat as well, so uh, white certainly has the upper hand in all of those variations. 